I had discovered the joy of creating from a really young age. I can't even pinpoint when it started. I would say certainly by the time I was five, I was just making things prolifically just for fun because it gave me joy. And that could have been painting, it could have been writing songs or just sewing things, trying to help in the kitchen, making up plays, making up stories with my stuffed animals, just anything where I was using my imagination. I loved to create. And I grew up in a homeschool family where there was a lot of free time to play. So we were outside a lot. We had time to craft. We read so many books. And I know that looking at illustrations and books was so much of my inspiration for wanting to be an artist from a young age. I do think about what it means to be a faithful artist as a believer. And I know for me, one of the main things that it means is to be honest with my work. I think there are some Christians that are meant to make art that's purely beautiful and just meant to put more beauty into the world. I think there are believers whose art is meant to be really prophetic and challenging. And I think there are artists whose work is just meant to innovate and create new ideas and innovations in their medium and in their field. Um, but I know for me, if I'm able to see things and try to represent them in a way that is telling truth about whatever that is, then that helps me know that I've succeeded. And I've never fully succeeded. It's always a journey of learning. Um, but one way that that definitely comes into play is when I'm doing portraiture. I think a lot about the dignity in that person and how I can portray their story, portray their history, and not objectify them and also not glorify them, but be able to say, here's a person who's made in the image of God, who matters, who despite the things they may not like about themselves, is full of beauty and worth and value. And so I try to communicate that. I've been working in this studio space since the fall. I had just moved and I was looking at different spaces to use as a studio, and I mentioned it to my friend Megan. And she and her boyfriend Nate have been dear friends of mine and supporters of me for years, but never occurred to me that in mentioning that, that they would think, oh, Nate just bought a house. This could be a space for Katie Joy. But they offered it to me. I came and looked at it and it was really the perfect space with great lighting and room. And during the day when Nate's at work, I'm not in anyone's way. So they offered the space to me to come and paint. I met Katie Joy years ago. We were both involved in the Young Adults uh, Ministry at Keystone Church. Kind of grew into very much like a brother and sister um, in Christ, but also more familial than uh, than just that in a way. Um, where to the point where it's like, hey bro, hey sis, like that kind of that kind of relationship. For me, it was always natural to open up my home to other people, especially with my house. I never wanted doors to feel closed. I never wanted people either feel not welcome well <laughs> having an artist use one of your spare bedrooms as her studio definitely would not be what I would have thought that would have looked like initially but it's been a really cool kind of continuation of that thought of kind of my in my relationship with the Lord and his blessing to me um, to be able to have things to be able to I see it as very much like the only reason that he grants me to have anything is because it's not mine. Yeah, in my home growing up and stuff like that, when we're talking about the bedrooms, when we're like talking to each other as a family, we're saying, where is that? Oh, I think it's up in mom's studio. Like that was just a geographical location for me growing up. She always had a room in the house that was her studio. This is, this is for art. This is a set aside space just for my art. And so that definitely triggered for me when Katie Joy, you know, expressed a need for that space, that kind of rang true to me as far as like knowing what my mom needed. Pretty much every time I come to the studio and start working, I pray the prayer of the artisan that was taught to me years ago. And there's a phrase in there that I really love. And it says that when I think something's good, I can't always be sure that it's good. And if I think that I've done something poorly, it doesn't necessarily mean I've done a bad job. Um, there's also a phrase in there that talks about if you're doing things for love of the good, that's what's going to endure. It's not about wanting to make money, it's not about wanting to please your patron, but really doing something for love of the good. And those phrases in particular keep just recentering me, refocusing me when I'm creating to just remind me that this is something that I'm giving back to God with open hands. I'm not in complete control of it. I don't have to feel that I'm in complete control of it. 
but I want to do it out of love and trust that it's something God can use, even the things that I may think are imperfect or not done well, that they can be beautiful and they can be an act of worship. I am Katie Joy Nellis. This is my space, and I am Poema Visual Arts.